My name is Bert, and this is the Still Life Podcast. Welcome back to the Still Life Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bert, and it is Friday, May 28th, 2021. I'm feeling pretty good today, a little bit tired, but uh, not terrible. The kidney stone is continuing to settle down little by little. It hurts less today than yesterday, which is a great thing. And now that it's stopped raining for at least the day, and I feel pretty decent, once I get done with this episode, I'm going to go fishing, something I haven't done for one week. Last time I went out fishing, it was a week ago today, so I am looking forward to getting out fishing um, I'll be pond hopping today, just bank fishing, chasing some largemouth and maybe some crappie if they're biting. I don't know with the rain, of course, water levels are going to be high and uh, water has cooled off just a hair, but uh, we'll see how it is. At least I'm going to get outside and get some fresh air for a little while. Heading into the weekend, uh, not a ton of stuff planned, going to just enjoy some downtime, enjoy the weekend, heading into Memorial Day. And of course, looking forward to spending some time with my grandfather on Memorial Day. Uh, I know it kind of sounds like he is alive, but he is in fact not. Uh, he was a World War II vet, died in uh, 92. But on Memorial Day, go out to the cemetery, go visit him, kind of update him on life. And, uh, you know, just hang out there for a little bit. And it's really one of those things that, you know, prior to going on a deployment and experiencing combat, I didn't really think a lot about, you know, um, he died when I was about 10 years old, nine, 10 years old. And so, you know, really we never got to talk. I never got to hear about his experiences from world war two. And f from my understanding, he didn't really talk about his experiences in combat in world war two. And so, you know, at some point when I breathe my last breath here on earth, um, I will get to sit down and talk about all that stuff with him over a beer, of course, because why not? Um, you know, hopefully that's a long ways away. Hopefully, you know, uh, that's somewhat in my control, uh, somewhat not in my control, but you know, I look forward to that time when it comes. And, you know, that's not to say that I look forward to death or look forward to dying, but I look forward to being able to reunite with my grandfather. And now I have all these stories and, you know, we'll get to sit down and, and uh, he'll get to share his with me and I'll get to share mine with him. And it's just, you know, thinking about just that sweet time of reuniting and getting to have conversation for the first time in literally a lifetime, you know, is just, it's a very sweet thing to think about. And so I look forward to that time when that does get here. But like I said, I'm in no big hurry to get there. You know, my time will come when it comes and, and I'm going to do what I can to avoid leaving this planet any sooner than I absolutely have to. But moving on in other news, uh, I am looking at going back to school at 39 years old, this will be, oh gosh, um, yeah, not 100% sure on what I'm going to do, but I am leaning towards getting a degree in broadcasting with an emphasis in sports. Broadcasting is something I've always been passionate about. In fact, prior to joining the military, I was pursuing a degree in broadcasting. So this is not unfamiliar territory for me. I have an opportunity to go back to school and study something that I enjoy and that I'm passionate about. And having a degree in broadcasting seems like I'm kind of pigeonholing myself, but at the same time, I believe that in a corporate environment sets me up for success because generally, you know, that means I'm well-spoken, polished, and have the ability to communicate extremely effectively with other people. And really, it's just a feather on my cap. I've done a very large amount of training, both corporately, in the military, in the civilian sector, specifically training mixed martial arts fighters and teaching concealed carry classes. So I have a vast array of training experience and teaching experience under my belt. But again, having that degree in broadcasting is a feather in the cap and really the icing on the cake as far as 
I believe, getting jobs geared more towards teaching and coaching, instructing in a corporate or business environment. Because I feel like I've been stuck in this trap, like this void of, well, you're overqualified for this job. And well, if you had a college degree, you'd be the ideal candidate kind of a place. And it's like, you know, again, and I've talked about this on previous episodes, it, for some reason, it seems so hard to find a company that will meet me in the middle. It's like I'm either having to take entry level positions everywhere that I go or hope and pray that somebody is going to hire me based on my experience. And while I see all of these job openings that talk about, oh, you know, relevant experience, which I have plenty of relevant experience in lieu of degrees, you know, it never seems to be enough. Or like I said, it is too much. So, you know, what is that like butter zone? What is that magic area where it's like, you're perfectly qualified for this job, or you have just the right amount of experience for this job? I've yet to find that place. And it's extremely frustrating as a professional to go into, you know, the job search, the job hunt, and continually get rejected. And while, for the most part, I don't care about being told no, you know, because I'm in this place of there is an open door somewhere. I just have to find it. And in order to find it, I'm applying for all kinds of stuff. Now, a lot of doors are closing, which, yeah, is frustrating and can be discouraging. But eventually, I'm going to find the open door. And when I do, I ain't just stepping through it. I'm busting through that damn thing. I'm going to bust through the doorway and let everybody know I'm there. And I'm ready to work. So, you know, I will get there. It's a process, sometimes an incredibly frustrating, discouraging, irritating process. But it is a process and I will get through it one way or another. And I was just reminded of this story when I left a former employer almost a decade ago. I did an exit interview and there were some leadership issues within the company and I was upfront and honest and candid about all the things that I saw that were issues that needed to be fixed. And of course, you know, I, they were dismissed because I was me and I was a manager, you know, and whatever. Well, come to find out a few months after I left, the company hired a consultant to kind of examine the business and see where they could improve. They paid this guy $25,000 and he said almost verbatim all of the issues that I brought up in my exit interview. So, number one, had they listened, they would have saved twenty five grand, or they could have just given me a $25,000 bonus. And I could have told them, well, you know, what? well, I did tell them exactly what this consultant said. So, you know, it really pays to listen to people. In the corporate environment, whether you think they're full of crap or not, or whether you care about their opinion or not, somewhere in that company, it may not be somebody that makes a lot of noise, but there is somebody there that knows exactly what's going on, the good, the bad, and how to fix it. So, you know, it's just another one of those things where you go to work for an organization, a company, whatever, and, oh, well, you're not just a number to us, you're a person, and at the end of the day, yeah, you're just a number. You're, you know, a, a series of transactions on a payroll ledger or you are an employee number or badge number or whatever the case is. And again, I know I've talked about this on other episodes, but we seem to have lost touch with the human element of business and working with other people. And that's something that has to change. And I believe that it will eventually come back full circle. Now, there are some small businesses that have that aspect because they are small businesses. But once a company gets to a certain size, it seems like for the most part, they shift their focus and it becomes all about the business and less about the people that are helping to drive and run the business and keep it afloat. And that's really a delicate balancing act that so many companies have gotten wrong, especially these gigantic corporations. Hey, that's great that a CEO somewhere is getting a $25 million bonus every year 
while the bottom of the rung employees do good just to pay their bills. You know, that's a problem. As a CEO, I mean, yeah, if somebody was coming at me and saying, hey, you earned an extra 25 mil this year because the company's in great shape. I mean, wouldn't you at some point remember everybody else that's running the company? Because even if you're the CEO of the company, if everybody else leaves, you got nobody. You can't run that business by yourself. And so, you know, I'm all, all for capitalism, you know, and people making money. I don't believe there should be caps on that. But I will say if these large corporations and these CEOs with lots of money and lots of power were to remember the people and actually take care of the people rather than giving them these worthless benefits or, you know, rewards or whatever, take care of the people that take care of you. And you're going to see the business flourish in a way that you didn't know was possible. But again, I mean, what do I know? I've never been the CEO of a company. Now I have owned a few businesses, but you know, I've never been a big wig at a gigantic corporation but I know work, I know people, I know leadership, and I know management, you know. But hey, again, who am I? I'm just a guy out here looking for a job. And with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me on the Still Life Podcast. As always, for questions, comments, topic ideas, or suggestions, or if you'd like to become a sponsor of the Still Life Podcast, you can reach us, the Still Life Podcast at gmail.com. That's the Still Life Podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget, to visit us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at The Still Life Podcast. Check out our YouTube channel, The Still Life Podcast. And of course, give us a follow, a like, and subscribe. Thanks again for joining me today on The Still Life Podcast. We'll talk again soon.